Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to another episode of the Trans Atheist Podcast. I am your host, Ariane, and today we're going to be talking about something called American Family Radio. So if you're like me and you end up with a decent commute to work or you spend a lot of time in the car, you probably had that experience of flipping through the radio stations. You know, you find one that, you know, you like a couple of songs, but then another one comes on and you can't stand it, so you flip to another station, or you find a good station, but you travel right outside of range, so you end up flipping through stations trying to find something to listen to. And that is how I ended up stumbling across American Family Radio. So, to clarify, American Family Radio is the media arm of the American Family Association. And what is the American Family Association? Well, it's a Christian theocrat organization. Basically, they go, they lobby senators, they get senators and congressmen and local reps to come on their shows and kiss their asses. They talk about basically putting their religious views into law, although they would never say that quite that way, but they were some of the um, very involved groups that were pushing um, to delegitimize the Supreme Court ruling on marriage equality. They have pushed very hard on this Dobbs decision to eventually overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, if you go back a little bit further, to the re-election campaign of Donald Trump, or Donald Trump, pardon me, of George W. Bush. They were part of the group trying to get um, ballot initiatives, uh, constitutional amendments on state ballots in order to ban gay marriage in those states, which was a very successful campaign. So, going on to American Family Radio. Their lineup is kind of a who's who of who's that. So there are a bunch of has-been, you know, political, but some political hacks. You have some people like, um, or what is his name on here? Well, you've got Dr. James Dobson, who is kind of the beginning of, of all of this. You have their little Discovering the Jewish Jesus, which is their take on kind of doing their own Jews for Jesus type of organization. You have Bishop E.W. Jackson, which if you're not familiar with him, if you were a Virginian, you would be. He was a perennial candidate, uh, very right wing. I'm not sure what he considers himself the bishop over, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and then you have the Addisons, another family that goes very right-wing. They have a lot of shows. They have the Washington Watch, where they bring on various politicians to discuss their big points, which is usually immigration, uh, LGBT rights, all in the negative, of course. So if you go on their page and you take a moment and you search something like transgender, you'll pull up 113 results. You'll get another 100 if you pull up terms like gender confusion, which is one of their big things. Um, that's how they refer to trans people. We are gender confused. And if you take a little bit of time and you're listening to their show, because apparently I'm just a masochist who tortures myself by listening to this complete and total bullshit, you'll find that in almost every show, every segment, they will somehow find a way to throw in trans people. They've been working very hard for quite some time on making trans people this boogeyman, and they're going right in line with the current culture war phenomenon that we see. So they constantly throw up drag queens and drag queen story hour, and they try to scare parents with that, and then they turn right back around and try to connect that into, you know, gay people and and trans people, you know, looking through some of the things that they have done. Let me type in transgender here again. And you will see, uh, let's see, some of their reports. They have people like Marsha Blackburn talking on um, this Center for Biblical Worldview offering guidance for Christians on how to respond to transgender, well, 
uh, tra the, the transgender movement. Um, and this was Dr. Jennifer Bowens, I guess. No, no, Dr. Owen Strachan. Jennifer Bowens is the one who was also on this particular show talking about trans people um, and Medicaid services dropping transgender procedures from their latest Obamacare rule changes. So, every chance they get, they work in trans people and they turn us into the boogeyman. And actually, in, you know, some later episodes, they even created their own little um, documentary, it's more like a mockumentary, um, called In His Image. And it's very interesting. I am looking at doing a full response to this later. Um, I'll watch it so you don't have to, and let me assure you, you don't want to. It is complete and total rubbish, but basically, after all of this time of uh, throwing in trans people as the scare tactic, they're then going to go into giving you a little documentary style thing to try to scare you even more so. So they've already set it up. And let's see if I can find it on here. It's been out for a little bit, but... Um, so here it is. Here, This is great. Let me get in here. Watch now for free our new original feature-length documentary from American Family Studios titled In His Image, Delighting in God's Plan for Gender and Sexuality. Yes, gay people, they're not just coming for trans people in this video, although that is kind of a focus, but they'll come for you too. So, it says, let's see if I can find the interesting parts. They're talking about how they came up with the idea, apparently, which no one really cares. Uh, prayer meeting, praying to God, somehow God must have told them to attack trans people. That's what I would do. Um... Uh, here we go. In his image addresses extremely important questions. Like, what does the Bible say about homosexuality and gender identity? Here's the bigger question. Why give a fuck? But anyway. Can you be gay and Christian? How should church members respond to members who are gay or facing challenges with their gender identity? So we're, cha we're facing challenges if you're, you know, trans. So, uh, I've watched a few minutes of this, and I'm not going to go into all of it because I want to do a full podcast on this. But needless to say, it is full of conversion therapy. Um, they get some ex-gays and, you know, how they went totally straight um, after uh, praying to Jesus enough. And then they get a person on whose parent, father, uh, transitioned to a woman and and they try to make some horrible comparisons by sharing her story, however accurate or inaccurate it may be, about how her dad was jealous of her and had a peephole into her room so that they can further this idea that trans people are somehow this scary boogeyman, this predator coming after children, even if it's their own children. Uh, basically, it is nothing but a hate group. And it's a large one, and it's an influential one. You know, things like the American Family Association and their offshoots were very involved in the Trump administration for quite some time. It was groups that kind of worked around that to get us our um, current lineup on the United States Supreme Court. So when you see what they believe, you get a good idea. And there's a lot of congressmen that show up on this show right-wingers that want to, you know, Marsha Blackburn is on there very regularly. She's the Tennessee witch who often has to come out to uh, attack trans people. She's the one who her only thought, well, assuming she has one, in the hearing to confirm um, Justice Katanji Brown-Jackson was um, define woman. And she thought that was her big gotcha because, um, you know, Katanji would not actually do that because it has nothing to do. Plus, it's something that could come up to the Supreme Court. Um, so, this is an extremist organization. 
if you are of the right mind to be able to handle the constant influx of negativity, I would encourage you to look and see if you have a local American family radio, just so you can see what's going on with this group. Uh, but be forewarned, you will be hearing very regular attacks on trans people, misgendering every chance they get. Um, it is really a disgusting organization, and they're in a lot of communities, including our own, working through our radio stations. I think in my local area here in Ohio, they are, is it 91.5 or 93.5? 91.5. Um, so, um, it's a very interesting thing. Having listened to it, it's not only anti-gay and anti-LGBT. They also often speak about a woman's role in the household. It is very much so, um, well, misogynistic. You know, they talk about how a man's job is to correct his wife, and the woman's job, if your husband is in error, is just to pray for him. You know, you don't need to openly correct him, just pray for him. Uh, they talk about uh, you should never ever criticize your husband or anything that he does. You know, instead you should pump him up all the time and, and you know, tell him how wonderful he is and all the great things about him, nothing negative. It is the biggest load of right-wing bullshit. 1950s style, women should be barefoot, pregnant, in the kitchen and without equal rights. That is the whole basis of this group. Um, when they say the American Family Radio, number one, it's more like American Fascist Radio. But beyond that, it's not just about family, as they want to put it. It's about pushing their religious agenda, not just through evangelism, which you can have whatever view you want on that, but through actually making it law. You know, they want to not, it's not just that you know, they talk about how parents' choice, when they're talking about, for example, schools teaching things. Well, the parents should have a decision in that. It should be their choice. Same with vaccines. It should be their choice. But they don't want the parents to have any choice if that choice involves having a trans child. Then we want to take away all choice, and you do what they tell you to do, what this church high council tells you to do. Um, it is a vile, evil organization, and unfortunately they have their hands in a lot of churches. I can remember seeing things being put out, being passed out in like church bulletins when I would grow up, you know, in church and even as an adult when I, before I left religion, that would be these little things from the American Family Association or Focus on the Family, which James Dobson is involved in both. Um, so they get people in, and it's always, here's where you can find more information. And even if the pamphlet that you've got in your little order of service for, for church on Sunday morning may not include anything transphobic on it, it's going to have the link so you can go to their website and get thoroughly indoctrinated about how trans people are going to destroy society, your children, and your marriage. So... Uh, it's very important that we keep an eye on groups like this and know what they're up to. This is another example of Christian nationalism that we talked about in previous episodes. It is a very regular part of what they do and what they discuss. So, again, just something to keep an eye on. That is pretty much all I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to kind of end it there. I will be doing a more in-depth um, video uh, podcast on the In His Image documentary as soon as I get a chance and as soon as I've taken enough anti-nausea medication to be able to watch it without throwing up. Um, so I'll watch it so you don't have to and then provide you with info on it. But you're welcome to watch it if you feel like it. I don't recommend it because the 15 minutes or so that I've already seen of it is complete and total bullshit, but hey, maybe you have a high tolerance for bullshit. If you do, In His Image is the documentary for you. Otherwise, if you have any video ideas, any ideas for content, any comments, please feel free to leave them below. Um, we will have more podcasts going out. Some of them will have video accompanying them. Some of them will not and will be strictly vocal with graphics on the screen. 
all based on how I'm feeling at the time of what makes it easier for me to produce to get content out there. But please feel free to share the videos, um, to share the podcasts. We're available on YouTube, on Spotify, on Spreaker. Um, there are a few different places you can find the videos, find the podcast at least, um, and listen in. So until the next episode, this has been The Trans Atheist. I am your host, Ariane, and I will close with my quote from Kesha. Don't let the bastards get you down. Even if that bastard wears a little clerical collar and has a little cross around his neck. So, be strong, stand up, and remember, now is the time that we fight back. Lots of love, guys, and bye-bye.